Good afternoon. Uh, so we are continuing from the uh, Lojong teaching <coughs> by the great the Kadampa Master, the Langri Tamba. Um, is called eight verses of uh, uh, the the mind training teaching, and uh, we have been completed um, the first, second, and the third verses this morning, and then our next is the the number four, the verse. <coughs> Here I read in Tibetan first. Rangjing and Bess Sam Jinni, the Duke Tabu Nunhong said, Rinjing and Tedan Chebashin, Nepal Kaye, Jinjin Shop. Now, this verse, okay, I read in English. When I see beings of wicked nature, oppressed by violent misdeeds and afflictions, may I hold them dear as if I had found a rare and a precious treasure. This verse is for the very much relating to the people who are socially marginalized, perhaps their behavior, destitute, and uh, many things that uh, whom you don't like, but for the Kadamba's masters, those circumstances are very beneficial for the, the Kadamba uh, masters because uh, we talk about there are two different notions the notion that is called the pleasant circumstance and the other one is called the unpleasant circumstance talking about the pleasant circumstance we have no problem I am. In 24 hours, we are enjoying everything with the pleasant circumstance, like good food, good life, good community, and the good surroundings, and the good facilities, and the good everything, which we are enjoying. Although there are a lot of confusions and difficulties from there, but we uh, tend to ignore. But the problem is for the masters or for the uh, practitioners that is very difficult to be dealt with the unpleasant situation physically, mentally, general or particular. We have all kinds of things and uh, talking about unpleasant circumstance we are failed to be the tolerant with it and uh, difficult to accept as it is and then we become restless and uh, then you give up your practice to me it seems that why our practice failed when we face the tragic or difficult situation because our hope and expectation is too high. It's too high. And uh, we cannot make instant change in our life through application of Buddha Dhamma 
It's a very difficult. Buddha spent a lot and a lot and a lot of times to be enlightened. And after that, the great masters in India, and in Tibet, Mahasiddhas, Pandits, and the great realizer beings faced the difficult situation. But they have never given up their hard work and their diligence. So eventually they are able to overcome their shortcomings, <coughs> difficulties. And we are very sensitive, I think, very sensitive. Expectation is too high and at the same time too sensitive. So therefore, we failed to carry on our practice because external factors are too powerful to us. And very unstable, our situation, the day-to-day -day life. We want to be something, we tend to be something, and we would like to, to get something but what we expect and what we hope is more than what we do. That's the problem. Supposed to do more than the hope. That's why I'm saying human being is very complicated. Somebody say, and someone next to listen, but cannot walk together. And you read the textbooks, and you listen to teachings, and you know it very well. Very well. You are not naive anymore. You are very clever. And you know how to gain the experience of joy. You know it very well. Unless you pretend. You know very well. But the only thing, Max, problem is the laziness. Laziness for overcoming problem. You don't want unwanted situations. You know this is unpleasant. We know this is no longer pleasant at all. And really want to get rid of and dispel. But keep on failing because our negative habitual tendency is firmly, solidly grounded. Even talking about compassion, love, is very much a ground to like self-centered attitude. It's not really genuine at all. Seemingly, yes, but fact is different. <coughs> You act, we act very nicely. We know how to act. Very professional. But the fact tells a different story. So I believe rather fact than the action. <coughs> Therefore, talking about love, talking about compassion, talking about the bodhicitta, is very much like self-referential self consideration, isn't it? Is it connected to my, again? Because of my, my, I. If it is connected to that situation, there is no love. There is no compassion. There is no loving kindness. We say loving kindness, we say love, we say compassion, we say altruism. All beautiful words we do say. But if you carefully analyze or cautiously consider, are these are really related to the genuine compassion? No. It's very much self-referential consideration and self-centered attitude. 
Because of this, no matter how profound the teaching is, never walk with us. Because a degree wise, we are higher than the teaching. Our ego is much less profound than the teaching. Therefore, teaching fails to enter into the ego. Do we do practice? Eventually, the practice also transforms into ego. We do meditation. After some time, meditation becomes tool to develop our ego instead of bring it down. That's why I'm calling its complicated situation. So, for us, as a Dhamma practitioner, as a simple Dhamma practitioner, forget about the, the Madhyamika practitioner or Vajrayana practitioner, Mahamad, Maha Ati practitioner or Mahamudra practitioner, just put them at the side. Simple, basic notion talking about Buddhist follower of Lord Buddha. What, we, what are we doing? So, <clears throat> as a Kadampa masters, they are very determined and they have given up their life for the, the benefiting of all sentient beings. Benefiting sentient being is the essential practice in Mahayana, particularly in Kadambata's teaching. Atisha's disciples, the close disciples, they say the crying is their daily practice. Cry for sentient beings. They cannot bear, they cannot tolerate the pain and the suffering of sentient beings. We cry for ourselves. I cry for myself. When I have a pain, then I cry. I'm sorry, I'm not crying for you. And uh, so therefore, it's, it's, it's not valuable at all. That's why I'm saying it's a self-referential consideration. Right? We are not willing to give up self-centered attitude. We recite, we repeat those profound teachings given by Lord Great Masters. But when it comes to us, it's very difficult because our the habit, negative habitual tendency is still, still profoundly rooted, difficult to, to dig it out and uh, to diminish it. Therefore, here Langley Thampa says, for the beggars, like food beggars, if someone provides food for this beggar, so it is really rare and a treasure for this beggar, isn't it? Someone thirsty, looking for water or juice. The water and the juice is like treasure if somebody provides the juice and the water to this person who is under the suffering of the thirsty. Likewise, as a Kadamba master or the serious practitioner, if you are able to see <coughs> that those, the people who are socially the, mar the marginalized, like your behavior is uh, totally, really, you don't like, you know, strange behavior, they're, they're destitute, and uh, showing all kinds of things. So this is great taste for us, isn't it? the great taste, then you will know, am I doing my practice right or wrong? That is the great testimony. Everybody show your smile. No problem. 
I'm doing my brightest best. Everybody is so loving. Everybody is so kind. Everybody is helping you. Everybody is smiling at you. Everybody is cooperate with you. Everybody is working with you. No problem. But the problem is when someone is showing you long face or stare at you, then that is the best. The moment for you to realize or to be checked, are you doing okay or not? Are you applying those great teachings within or failed? Therefore, we have to cherish others' negative attitude, accusation. If somebody criticizes you or accuses you, shout at you, in one hand it's difficult to be tolerated, but on the other hand, according to the teaching, if you value the teaching, then we should value the circumstance. If you don't value the teaching or the masters, then you should ignore and give up. Otherwise, we should value the moment when you get these kind of unpleasant circumstances. One hand is difficult, other hand needed as an object of a practice. And the fifth, Dala Shinji Tadoki, Shiguru Lasu Miribe, Jongharang, Lembadang, Jahashen, and Buasho. When others out of envy treat me badly with slander, abuse, and the like, may I suffer the, the lose after that, after the victory to them, or offer, offer the victory to them. Suffer the lose, lose, or after the victory, or offer the victory to them. It's the same concept that we have been discussed this morning. It is very much based on the concept of realizing how our ego is powerful. If you are very decisively, the decisively realize that all the suffering and the pain is produced by the ego, anger, so-called these afflictive emotions, then no matter how difficult situation come to you, you can easily transform them into your practice. If you failed to realize such, then it's very difficult, almost Im impossible. So, it is not something that I'm forcing myself to, to accept such circumstances. Although I am not willing to do that, but teaching is not for the individual who are not practiced well and uh, unwillingly to do such, then is, it is not advisable. But basic understanding of Kadamba's teaching is so beautiful. Why it is beautiful? Because it's, it's, it is pointing out the how the the negative and the how the negatively the powerful our ego is, introducing which we never realized it before. And uh, ego is within us from the beginningness of the time. Right? Yes. I think so. So, and uh, we enjoy with it. 
But why is the realizer beings like Bodhisattvas, the great masters in India and the Tibet in the past? Through their great wisdom, have seen their true nature. And they have seen the cause or the origin of these, the unwanted situations, is the ego itself, ego. So therefore, as I said this morning, our ultimate enemy is the ego itself, ego. Atma in Sanskrit, that you grasp your, you know, is a, as an eye that holds so firmly and uh, cling on it. Because of this, then all the rest of the unpleasant the emotion arises. Emotion itself is very innocent. Mahayana teaching, particularly Gadamba's teaching, is not blaming on the emotion itself. I don't know, emotion is the English term, right? But confusion. Confusion. But emotion is very much related to the, to the ignorance. And from the ignorance, then emotion arises. Teaching does not blame on the emotion. <coughs> Teaching advice, be wise, be cautious with emotion. If you follow the emotion, then the problem started. Let emotion arise, that doesn't matter. But at the same time, it is advised, be recognized when emotion arises. And the teaching does not advise to, to dispel the emotion. Instead of that, Kadamba teaching bring emotion into practice. Emotion is object of your meditation. If you bring ob emotion as an object of meditation, then emotion helps you to increase or further development of your meditation. In Mahamudra teaching, Mahaati teaching upgraded their system. Because of the system of the realization, because it is not the philosophical or intellectual meditation, it is rather cultivative the meditation. So in the teaching of Mahayana, particularly Mahamudra and Mahaati, the negative emotion arises, then should appreciate the, that emotion. And the let emotion arise, at the same time bring emotion into the meditation. If you are able to bring emotion into the meditation, the meditation will be increased. Strength or the power of the meditation will be increased. And then as a yogi, the great meditator or great practitioner, and a more emotion arises and a great enjoyment is there because emotion does not disturb you any longer. Our problem is the disturbance of the emotion. Emotion disturbs us because you are clinging to the emotion. You are grasping the emotion and you follow the emotion. Emotion leads you nowhere. So that's our problem in our meditation. So teaching never say emotion is bad, never. Yes, in Hinayana, yes they do. It is, it has to. They say emotion not good, anger not good, attachment no good, desire no good, yeah, and the confusion no good, as well as like um, you know all other these uh, so-called afflictive emotions are no good, because there the skill is very limited. 
So at the first, they let you feel disgusting with them. Say, no good. This food is no good for you. Okay, then what to do? Don't eat, that's it. Right? So likewise. So therefore, the... But this kind of Bukadamba's teaching, particularly Mahayana teaching, Maha, Maha Pati, Mahamudra teaching, so we should accept emotion as it is. And we should bring it into meditation. Then you become yogi and the yogi knees. Why we call yogi? The person he person who is a stable, fully stabilized their the mental strength, the power of a meditation, then that particular person is we call yogi or yogini. Is not title of certain practices. It is very much related to the degree of your realization. So, yogi, at the stage of the yogi, one who is fully empowered the external factors. No differentiation between whether you are in the solitary retreat or you are right at the, the crowded spot. External factor no longer disturb your practice and your meditation, then you are absolutely yogi and yogini. We are looking for that. Then no need to cry. You will laugh always, smile always. So that's the thing. So in order to reach that stage, there are so many processes. It's not easy. Just sit there and do meditation, say that I have seen now true nature. Cannot. It's not that as simple as you expect it. Shantideva's teaching, Bodhisattva Jaya Avatara. The foundation of meditation is the mindfulness, cautiousness, the alertness. In our daily life, you can examine and you would know, you would know how helpful the mindfulness is. Fell or the lack of mindfulness, the lack of cautiousness, we often face problems and the difficulties unexpectedly. The most of them are just arise as unforeseen. Those are those are unforeseen situations, which we do not expect, but it comes as it is. So therefore, with the help of mindfulness, you can reduce the number of unwanted situations. And slowly, slowly, because of the mindfulness, your mental stability will be arise, what our mental stability developed, and from there, then you can build up all the rest of the meditations. So the steps are so important. The stages are so important. It's very rational process, the systematic process. Therefore, our Lord Buddha has performed three different types of teachings. The teachings for the Hinayana, the teachings for the middle school, the Mahayana uh, type, and the fully the developed the capacity of the quality, and then turned the last, the third, the, the training wheel of Dhamma. That is general, and particularly there are many, but in general the three the different type of the, the will of Dhamma has been turned. So, in this case, in this case, so anybody out of their, what I call, uh, the envy, the trick me badly, with the slander, abuse, whatever, I should appreciate, I should welcome them, and I should offer them the victory, prosperity, happiness, joy, and the fulfilling of wishes, whatever I offer to them, joyfully, willingly. 
we call this is exchange. The Lojong practice, we call it exchange, right? With the black color and the white color, exhale and inhale is just a system. It's just a method. It's not really the practice of the, the Lojong. It's just method. Excellent practice is this one. And you do it from your heart, really exchanging, you know. You are offering you are offering the victories to them joyfully, and you are accepting unpleasant situation, the pain, the suffering, everything of others joyfully. For this you need determination, isn't it? Without the determination, you cannot do this at all. So how valuable their wisdom is, the great master's wisdom, their wisdom is so perfect, so perfect, amazingly, unbelievably. No wonder they could overcome their shortcomings and a problem and have given us such a wonderful teaching such a wonderful path. And they are also so kind because although they have achieved their enlightenment, but they don't rest there. They have given us to do the same thing what they have done. Because they cannot rest there. Because they can see the how power the powerful, um, the suffering and the cause of suffering in sentient beings. They cannot tolerate it. They cannot just simply rest there. So therefore, they have given us, shown us the actual, the beautiful path. Sometimes I just think myself, It's a bit confused, con confusing because we don't want suffering, we don't want pain, and we don't want all those unwanted circumstances. Yet we never apply. And uh, we keep running there and here places, like you give an example, we want to go to a holy place, so-called. Holy place like in Nepal, like holy place like in the Bodha, and Namu Buddha, or Paping, or in India, Bodhigaya, the Varanasi, of course the holy places are really blessed. But holy place does not work with you. If you do not change within, holy place cannot change you at all. Holy place is concept of your wisdom. Holy place is still earth, stone, tree, wood. Why holy? Then, that's a very good question. Answer should be found when someone asks you. Holy place, why holy? Holy is very much related to connect it to your wisdom and your, your actualization and your inner quality. Therefore, the place is also holy. If you are unable to change within through the training of your mind, then place is not holy at all. It is a holy, but it's not holy to you. It is the normal place, normal earth, normal water, normal tree, normal stone. Holy stone, holy water, holy tree, and a holy mountain, because connected to your wisdom, your realization, your understanding. So everything is the internal connected. Yeah? That's why connection should be made through realization. Connection should be made through understanding. Connection should be made from actualization and practice, the training of our mind. The more you train our mind, the more we train our mind, the more the deeper connection can be met. I think so. 
Therefore, as Gautam was teaching, first, we should give up such strong clinging to myself. Always, don't say always, I, I, my, mine. That's why I'm saying it's very much self, the referential consideration, so everything is connected to me, otherwise I don't want to do. Right? I help you because of something to do with me. Yeah? I like you because it's something to do with me. It's not out of, a, it's that kind of a immeasurable compassion, immeasurable or unconditional co compassion or unconditional loving kindness. It's, it's related to a certain case that is related to your own benefit or own interest. Nobody is perfect, but still okay. We are not expecting everybody should be perfect. Cannot. Nobody is perfect until fully enlightened. In the Sutrayana, you can read, even the Bodhisattvas on the 10th Bhumi has certain the degree of fault in the mistakes. Bodhisattvas on the 10th Bhumi, you know, are still okay. They do their own best. For us, our task is to be searched, our own faults and our own mistake. Teaching is not for digging or pointing the faults and the mistakes of others. The teaching is for the purpose of digging and pointing out the fault and the mistake of myself. That's the Kadamba's teaching. As long as you are in the state of the confusion, definitely you can see everybody is in the confusion. As long as your face is fully black, in the mirror, definitely you can see the face of a black. That's the truth. So therefore, in order to vision everything pure, beautiful, untouched by the, the negative uh, circumstances, if you really expect that much, then one should purify ahead the first. If you are fully purified, if you are fully you know, cleaned, then whatever you see, whatever you hear, whatever you smell, are all beautiful and the pure. That's, that's why in the High Tantric Vajrayana teaching, it's called all the sound of the, the sound of the, in the name of Guru, and all the visions and the male and the females are all the Jerasic of Lokiteshwara, and the females are the Tara. All the thoughts arise is the thought of the wisdom. It is the power or strength of the realization, practice, the training of our mind. If you do that, eventually you can see everything as clean. Everything is pure, completely pure. Until that, although it is pure, you can definitely see it as an impure. That's my own problem. It's not the problem of the object. It is the problem of my own confusion, my own imputation. So, teaching performed for self-training to bring down certain degree of negativities. That we have to, that we have to analyze, that we have to examine the day-to-day -day of practice. Don't say, I'm doing one hour practice in the morning. Don't say, I'm doing two hours practice in the evening. Don't say, I'm doing prostration for two hours, three hours. That's not the case. The case here is the quality, not the quantity. The quality. The quality is free from the measurement. The quality is free from the, any circumstances. Ten minutes, five minutes, more than enough. As long as you performed these the virtues with the, the perfect motivation, the perfect attitude. Must not make mistake in your choice. Dharma is not business. 
Dharma is for the purpose of benefiting yourself and sentient beings cannot be cheated at all. You can cheat one person, two person, three persons. But in the Shantideva, so teaching in the Bodhisattva Chayavatara, if you cheat beings, cheated all Buddhas, cheated all deities, protectors, and then you cheated all sentient beings. As a result, no need to say. That's it. Therefore, Kadampa's teaching. The profoundly performed, it's beautifully performed, the choice is upon individuals, right? So it doesn't matter if somebody say, you are bad, you are lousy, you are hopeless, it's still okay. Yes, until you're fully enlightened, you are hopeless anyway. Yes, I am hopeless I'm, until I'm fully enlightened. I'm hopeless. I'm a lousy man. I will be lousy. You cannot force to be changed by any means at all, unless you make it within. By law, you cannot change. By regulation, you cannot change. If you make, if you establish a law, order, law and order, regulation, you will do more in secretly. Right? More you force, the more you will get more idea how to do it. You cannot stop it. It's a human being. We survive in this situation from the beginningness of the time. You cannot change. Who will criticize you, say that, oh, you are too much? Yes, we are too much. That's why we are doing practice. And we are too much, that's why we are doing meditation. Otherwise, meditation is for what? Meditation cannot provide you our good food at all. So, must know the reason precisely and wisely. So that for the Kadampas masters, you say, if somebody admire you from here, at the same time somebody is accuse you, criticize you here, doesn't matter. All are same, because it's just sound. Bad or good is your concept. The bad and the good, neither, neither of them existed. Huh? The neither good nor bad. It is all your concept. I'm Bhutanese, I'm from Bhutan, in Bhutanese language, if somebody criticizes me, I will get hurt because I know the language. From other countries, which language that I do not speak, if somebody criticizes me, I don't mind because I don't speak. So it is very much related to the language and the concept, isn't it? Yes. In the reality, everything is your own perception your own conception. Conception is so beautiful if you walk with it beautifully. If you fail to walk with it beautifully, everything comes sour and unpleasant. So, choice is upon individual. Kadamba masters know that very well. Therefore, advise us, don't be full. Be awakened. Realize yourself. If you change such system, the victory is yours ultimately, not others. Doesn't matter. Somebody beat you, somebody kick you out, somebody kick you, beat you, kill you, accuse you, step on you, whatever. Doesn't really matter in this teaching. If you be, ma bo be more patient, understanding, accept the situation as it is, then they say, the ultimate victory is yours, not others. Sixth. Kana dagi pendalbe, jawa chawa kangshi ki, shindu merik nechenu, shinyin tamra tawa sho. When the one whom I have helped, benefited with the great hope, hurts me badly, May I behold him or her as my Supreme Guru. 
very difficult. Really, forget about Spring Guru. I cannot think as he is my friend as well. Right? Friend is somebody who is comforting you, talking nicely you, helping you, giving a cup of tea. Yeah? Even if you do wrong things, they say, oh, you are still right. So you are so happy. You call friend. But actually cheating each other, isn't it? Yes. And uh, you do right things, and the people think you are doing wrong. Doesn't matter. You do wrong thing, somebody say you are doing right, is very dangerous. That's not nice. My concept, in my own case, if I do right things, if somebody say you are doing wrong thing, still okay. It really, it hurts, of course. I'm not Buddha, I'm not Bodhisattva, I'm not realizer being, I'm still on the path and who has full of emotion, full of, full of confusion. I'm still struggling with them. Yeah? But still, as a teaching, as a Guru's teaching, that you still, should still remember, so I have to forcefully to understand it, to bear it, although unwillingly. But Gautama's teaching, the great master who is pointing out your fault and mistake, I, been, I have been helped you when you are in the poor, when you are poor. I have been helped you when you are in need. But as a result, now I get hurt, abuse, accusation, attack from you. And he, the Gadamba Master says, this person is your great guru, your great, friend, great master and your great Supreme Guru, which is true. What is instruction? That's a very good question, isn't it? We always repeatedly say instruction, teaching, advice, su yeah, suggestion, your opinion. When you approach to your guru and your teacher, your first question is, I am doing this and that. What is your opinion? And what is your advice? What is your instruction? <coughs> so, your expectation is, I know. Your expectation is still very weak. You are looking for some very simple instruction, not difficult instruction. If you receive a difficult instruction, I'm sure you will walk away. And then you will say, I will find another teacher. No problem. In this world, there are hundreds and thousands of teachers, and it's like a shopping center. And I can go to which department store and the shopping center. I can find the cheap, good, acceptable quality. Right? In the market. You don't need to spend too much money, so-called brand or expensive. Ex acceptable quality is still okay because your one person is using still okay survival right so I can find my teacher it's no problem it's advisable you should in the teaching it says you should have more teachers really I'm very serious why there is a reason because more you get teachings more you approach to teachers, and you get more teachings and more advices, then you can choose which one is suitable to you. Yeah? If you rely on only one in teacher, then unwillingly, or maybe, or with the obligation you have to rely on, although you don't want that practice, no choice, because you are not allowed to find someone else. Therefore, you can approach, yes. But don't forget, what are you looking for? What kind of teaching? What kind of instruction you are looking for? As long as the teaching that, the teaching that is hurting your emotion, that is the best teaching, best instruction. The teaching that never hurts you, instead of that, the teaching comfort you. That is so, so teaching. Kadampas masters, they say the best, best 
spiritual master is the, the person who accuse you in the public badly, hurtly, pointing out. Yeah? So that is the best supreme guru. The best instruction, the best teaching is the teaching that hurts you, your feeling. That is the best teaching. We are looking for pleasant teaching. Laughable, joyful, have a fun, best teaching. You go back, no change. For the Kadambas, the teaching that is very sharp, very sharp. The sharp that really firmly and solidly get into your emotion, your ego, and the ego gets embarrassing, right? Then you feel, oh, I don't want to keep this ego anymore. So you feel bad with your ego. Then you can make a change easily. So that type of teaching is the best instruction. Therefore, the performer of such teaching is the best Supreme Guru for the Kadambas. In this degeneration time, I, I presumably can tell that uh, if somebody really criticizes you in the public, I'm sure you will walk away and you, I can never see you from tomorrow. And then we talk all kinds of bad things. So that teacher no good, that master no good, he or she does this and that, yeah, because of that accusation. In the past, like that kind of a master, if they're pointing out, they point out their fault and a mistake, and a more, more, more student will come. Because they could feel the real connection. They could feel, they could feel the blessing. And they could feel that something is extraordinary. Yeah? So, gap of generation. So, one can digest that one, but other one cannot digest as such. So, our excuse is gap of generation. And you call modernize the modern teaching. To me, there is no modern teaching. As long as confusion gives you restless, what is modern teaching? I feel when you call modern teaching the teaching that make you happy, laughable, smile, that's it. What I need is, I need more serious teaching that makes you cry, feel sad, upset. That is what I call modern teaching. The teaching that make, make you cry every day, that's the best modern teaching. Because you have a big problem in this, 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 this time anyway. Everybody has more problem. This is not the time for us to laugh. This is the time for us to cry. Socially, individually, economically, philosophically, in general or particular. You could see anywhere around the world. So this is a time for us to cry, not to laugh. The situation is like that. So therefore, each and every word given by great masters, we must take them so seriously. Really, so seriously, how difficult our life is. Of course, as I said, nobody is perfect until fully enlightened. There's no, not much excuses anyway. Yeah, I do wrong thing, you do wrong thing, but we cannot really blame each other. But cooperatively sharing the precious teachings, at least we have to help in a wise way. Instead of yeah, just comforting you, of course I can comfort you and make you cool down for the time being. One hour, two hours, or maximum 24 hours. But you will definitely go back to your own habitual problem. But what we need is the teaching that can bring us or cool down permanently. And bring joy and happiness permanently and ever last long. That is 
from the teaching. We have to be very honest, isn't it? Honesty is so important, really. In any cases, any cases. It's a principle of a Buddhism. In Theravada teachings, also honesty is the principle. Of course, Mahayana. In Vajrayana, it's more important than honesty. To be honest to myself, I have to be honest to myself. Then I can be honest with you. So without being honest with yourself, how can you be honest with others? So therefore, honesty is very important in the teaching. And uh, Supreme Guru is a very interesting subject. There, is, uh, there are many confusions in the, in the um, system of the Guru. Different people do have different concept of Guru. Particularly in Vajrayana, it's very serious. It's a very serious connection. Once you have made the connection with the Guru or Vajra Master, then the relation or the connection should be lasted until fully enlightened. In the High Tantric teaching, it says, if you keep this relation profoundly, then the enlightenment comes together. The disciples, students, and the Vajra Masters together, enlightened, same time. I expect that one. Yeah? And nobody says, I want to enlighten with you. And they just say, I just want to follow you. Follow away. Cannot. Okay, follow to the enlightenment. Right? So, the guru is a Sanskrit term. It's more than teacher. The teacher is the person who is giving teaching. That is the teacher. One word, one lesson you learn from someone is automatically your teacher anyway. You cannot deny he or she is not your teacher because you have made connection with him or her and you have been learned from them. So the connection is there. So she or he is your teacher. But guru is different. Guru is the person who is giving you the profound subject of initiation, teaching whatsoever. When I'm saying profound, the profundity of the teaching, the teaching that leads you to the enlightenment directly, whereas the Sutrayana teaching takes time and indirectly. But the teaching of the Vajrayana, high tantric teachings, has a capacity or the strength, the power, if you practice, practice it accordingly, then the teaching has the power to lead you to the enlightenment directly. Therefore, in the teaching of Vajrayana, that particular person is the more than Buddha to yourself. The quality-wise, as same as Buddha, but the kindness is more than Buddha. So if you made a connection, this is very important, I need to explain you. Talking about the initiation, tantric initiation, you attend initiation in the future, yeah? I'm giving you general knowledge of the vagina because nowadays many of us keep attending the initiation, the puja, you know, the vajrayana activities, but the lack of knowledge such, therefore we keep failing. To, to, to make a perfection of the practice. And uh, once you attend the initiation, so that performer of the initiation is we call the Vajra Master. Tibetan word, Dorji Lopen, the Vajra Master. And the given initiation <coughs> and the teaching of the Tantra, the high tantric teaching, then the connection between two is what we call the Vajra connection. The Vajra connection. Vajra means changelessness. They cannot change. If anybody breaks it, either from the Vajra master or the disciple, then they say it's one way. 
One way, two way, I don't need to say. It's a one way. Yeah? There's no U-turn. So therefore, the breaking Samaya is come from the relation, which is very unstable. So if you consider, it's connected to your own ego and the confusion. Therefore, taking or becoming Vajrayana practitioner is rather more serious than the Mahayana practitioner. More serious, very serious. Don't make wrong choice. If you choose wrongly, it's kind of torturing yourself. It's very sensitive and very dangerous. Therefore, pure vision is so important. In order to develop pure vision to your guru, and one should develop the pure practice. Pure practice should be cultivated through the actual or the true understanding of a Buddha Dharma, then you will never make a mistake in your practice. Otherwise, wrong teacher, wrong advisor, they lead you to the wrong direction. So the knowledge is so important. Education is so important. The more you learn, the more you can feel comfortable. Then you can choose the right and the wrong. You don't need to depend on someone's advice. So openness is there. The wisdom is there. And you can see if you make a mistake, then how to restore it or to repair it. Also, you know, antidotes, applications are all there. So therefore, one should really have to be very cautious talking about the guru, Vajra guru, or the guru, or the teacher, or the master. And the sutrayana is okay, it's a simple. The finding teacher, there's not much samaya, or the concern for breaking samaya at all. It's rather simple. But the profundity of the connection or the, in, the, in the Vajrayana, particularly the high tantric Vajrayana, is rather more serious. It's not as simple as what you, in, what you expect or what you think. Therefore, this verse says, What is the Supreme Guru? The person who makes you restless, that is the Supreme Guru. Why I need restlessness from someone? Because I'm working with my ego. Yeah? So, in order to work with my ego, I need to, I need to have all kinds of emotion. Yeah? And uh, so this is a great taste for me, like an exam. I need to examine. So I, I can examine through these circumstances. Therefore, the person who creates such is my Supreme Guru. Number seven. Dona Murang Jibai Pendem Manam Kunambu, my Nuram Dumak Samenda Lemba Show. In short, may I directly and indirectly offer benefit and happiness to all my mothers. May I secretly or quietly take upon myself the harmful actions and the suffering of my mother. This is the actual practice of compassion. Tibetan word ying jie. As I said this morning, ying is a heart, jie is a lord. So the, the, the lord of heart. Seven-point mind training based on this practice. Why I have to do this? Because sentient beings are all my mother. Regardless, they are really being my mother or not. Okay, just forget about that. But at least my practice is definitely depends on them. Without the help of my mother's sentient beings, sure, I cannot practice. I cannot apply Buddha Dharma within. I cannot be enlightened. So therefore, they are definitely, undoubtedly, they are so kind to me. 
Therefore, it's worthy. It's worthy if I offer the、um, what do you call、um, happiness, the benefit to them, and secretly taking up their harmful actions and suffering. Why secretly or quietly? Because in the practice, sometimes we make mistake with the show off. Yeah, it's very dangerous. So therefore, Kadampa's masters, you see, they are so wise. They really so careful in every teaching. Make sure that they have said it. Next time, you cannot complain. Say that why didn't you say it secretly that time? Now you complain. But they have a given sense. Clearly, secretly. So keep low profile is the the Kadamba Master's the motto. Keep low profile. Do practice effectively. It's so nice. The great masters in the past, they do practice very quietly. People sleep, then they do meditation. People come in, they act as a sleeping. More effective. But this this is the opposite. More people come, they show off, and when everybody is gone, you sleep. It's quite interesting. Yes. So, therefore, we cannot get much benefit if somebody is looking at me. Then I can try. I try to make myself better. Like doing meditation like this, close my eye or cry in front of them, saying, "I just whisper myself, say that, oh how sad all sentient beings are suffering there." My expectation is the people around me can hear this. Yeah, so that sort of attitude, not everybody, but possibly some, therefore, precautiousness. Uh, is、uh, very important. So therefore, Kadamba Master says, secretly, do secretly. Do secretly is more effective.、Uh, secretly or quietly, no need to show off. Long time back, like Jawa Dumtenba is the great master of the Kadamba, as well as Patu Rinpoche, as well as Jawa Gotangpa, and、uh, Dubakaju, and many of them. Whatever you know, school they are doesn't matter. But their practice is Kadamba's teaching. So when you look at them, they are very ordinary person. Doesn't really look like practitioner. At least forget about Rinpoche or Tulku, whatever. At least they don't show like special practitioner, like you wearing different clothes. They are so simple and keeping low profile. But when the practice, when it comes to the point of a practice, it's much more effective. Almost to 24 hours, they don't sleep. They don't sleep. But when people, when when huge gathering is there, then they they are just a normal person, simple person. But quietly, they do practice very seriously. So therefore. Here it says that secretly, upon myself, the harmful actions and the suffering of other sentient beings, O Mother. So, for this also we need determination, right? Determination is so important. The determination comes from wisdom, not only from prayer. We make prayer is very helpful. Of course, we do prayer and we pray, but in order to pray, when you pray. The deities or guru protectors supposed to hear your prayer, isn't it? I think so. That's why we are doing prayer. We, our expectation is, can you hear what I'm saying? That's it. Or really, this hear or not your prayer is depends your attitude. Ultimate responsibility is upon yourself, not them. Yeah. So it's my own responsibility. It's own. It's my own attitude. It's my own sincerity. It's my own the loyalty with the sentient beings, with the great 
you know, the realizer beings. If you are sincere, then okay. What we need is a sincerity and a loyalty and a honesty. At all times, not only the time of a prayer, at all times, whether you are alone or among the people, doesn't really matter. So with that quality, if you make prayer, they can hear you. They listen to you all the time, but connection, like a telephone, make connection or not, that depends your attitude. So therefore, what I'm trying to tell here is the determination, <coughs> very much the dedicated to your practice, make sure that you are doing everything purely for the sentient beings. Nothing to do with my own purpose. But eventually, the benefiting sentient being is also for yourself. Eventually, it reaps the benefit to yourself. Right? It reaps the benefit to yourself, not others. You don't need to make a show off anyway. It's for yourself. Generosity, if you do, it's for yourself. The discipline, patience, concentrated meditation, any activities of the Mahayana, any practice of the Mahayana you do, it's eventually it benefits to yourself. So we don't need to look for reputation, name, fame, position, well-known whatsoever. We don't need. If you expect that, those are great obstacles. But those are great disturbances. Those are great hindrances to your practice to be completed. Obstacle come from within, not from outside. Hindrance come from within, not from outside. We call devil, evil, ghost. Yeah, they are kind of uh, the producer of obstacles. So no, the obstacle is come from within. Your negative mental attitude produce the serious obstacle. That obstacle is related to all your connected beings around. And it could be worsened after some time. So don't think obstacle is from someone or from somewhere else. It is come from within. Obstacle is met by confusion, misunderstanding, misbelief, misbehavior, mischievousness. All are wrong point, from wrong point, wrong attitude, wrong view. I myself always think that I'm correct, of course. I, I will say I'm correct, I'm right, you are wrong, right? Everybody says that. Nobody say, oh, sorry, I'm wrong, you are right. Nobody say, very rare, very rare. Although I do wrong, I still think that I'm right, because I have to win, right? I have to win. I have to get the victory. I will insist. I'm right. You are wrong. And who is the witness now? Where shall I go to find the witness? Yeah. So, the witness is the fact. The fact that is the reality. That, that reality is the truthfulness. The truthfulness is your sincerity. And who will see? By Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, deities. Right? Then, as a result, your mischievous, your mis misbehaviors, an obstacle comes automatically. That disturbs your emotion, that disturbs your health, that disturbs your happiness, that disturbs your prosperity, that disturbs your the joy. Eventually, Buddha says, you destroy yourself because of the negative attitude. As long as you are within the negative attitude, the destroyer is there and you cannot find the happiness. Therefore, attitude is so important. In any cases, in Hinayana, Mahayana, Vajrayana more serious. In Vajrayana more serious, talking about attitude. If you make slightest mistake in your attitude, lost the blessing, lost the connection. No point to keeping tanka, statue, images of the deities. It's just your bulky of your luggage for the traveling.
pay extra tax to the counter. No use. Keeping image, why? Do you know the purpose of why you are keeping image of like Vajrayogini? Why you are keeping the image of the, the Tara? Why you are keeping image of the like the any deities? It is the connection, connection to the reality. As a symbol, you are keeping image of deities. In order to make a connection to the reality of the deity, you keep symbol as a tanka, painting, picture, image. But that is kind of a reminder. The image is as a reminder to you how serious your sincerity, how serious your practice, how serious your truthfulness, how serious your diligence, how serious your understanding. Image is kind of a reminder you to remember the qualities. Images as a symbol for you to remind the how negativities are serious. So distinguishing between the right and the wrong, one should always work with them. So the images, the recitation, mala, are all we call the substance of the samaya, the substance of the, of the connection. If you lost completely the fundamental knowledge, the fundamental trust, fundamental connection, then those mala, those pictures, those images are useless. Meaningless. Yeah. That's why when you go to shop, you buy image. You bring it to a lama or whoever. Ask, please bless. It's not bless. It's a wrong. It's not. We don't call this a blessing. We call consecrate. Yeah. Consecrate means what you bought. Image is. We call the image of the the samaya. When the masters, the lamas, perform the consecration, is called the 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 image of the jhana, jhana. So, by performing such uh, the ritual practices, that samaya, the substance, the image, transform into the image of jhana, inside wisdom. So this particular image becomes the substance of the jhana, the wisdom. You keep it loyally, diligently, then one day that image talk to you. Will ask you what you want. Then you should demand what you want. So eventually you will feel or you will realize I should be free from the image then the image disappear one day happened in the history with the great masters it's so wonderful systematic it's logical it's not illogical it's a logical very acceptable factor otherwise you keep huge the gold gigantic image at your home, you try to talk to you, talk to him or her, people think you are crazy. And he would not talk to you, of course, definitely not. It's just tired. So therefore, you should know the entire system of the Vajrayana, yeah? how valuable and how precious, how valuable, realizing such validity, such, such a valu valuable situation, the fact then you perform the teaching practice and the puja whatsoever. In short time, you get a benefit immensely. And very short. You don't need to wait weeks, months, years and years and years. After a few years, then you say, oh, now I'm fed up with the Vajrayana. I kept this, this statue too long. And then after some time, you walk away. And in this country, like, sometimes the mouse goes into the statue. And uh, then it's become home of mouse. That's it. So therefore, connection comes from the wisdom. Have to open your mind. Don't be naive always. In order to finish the naive, one should open your mind to understand. Then the, all these unnecessary shortcomings can be 
you know, the diminution. Last. Dada Kunjang Chujiji, Topetime, Magu Mapansu, Chukunjumar Sebelo, Shimeching Natuasho. Last verse is the, the verse of wisdom. Seven verses, the verses of the method. The last one is called the verses of the wisdom. It says here, <coughs> May all their this remain undefiled by the stains of keeping in view the eight worldly the principles. May I, by perceiving <coughs> all phenomena as illusory, unattached, be delivered from the bondage of samsara. Expectation is not good. Of course, we do need expectation. Of course, everybody has expectation. Our expectation is to, to, to get rid of these pain and the suffering. Our expectation is to be gained the fully enlightenment, right? Omniscient state of a Buddhahood. And our expectation is to be a good practitioner. As a Buddhist, then the Buddhist point of view, what is the good character? The good character is the person who is keeping a good expectation. Yes, we need to have expectation. We do need, we do need, we must need expectation. But at the beginning, and eventually, yeah, as the time passes, you do, and eventually you should get free from the expectation. Expectation is one of the, the worst, the, the disturbance to the practitioners to be gained the, the, the ultimate enlightenment, enlightenment. Therefore, eight woodly dhammas, uh, I don't need to say it, it's simple, everywhere you can find in the, the, the um, Nagarjuna's teaching and the Shantideva's teaching, everywhere. So anyway, hope and the fear, this both. Yeah? There is a hope and there is a fear. The losing, losing, you know, things, you fear for losing the good things, and you, you are hoping to, to, to get good things. So with these two notions, like the hoping and the fearing, these two always keep you in the bondage of the samsara, never let you be free. I want to be free from the samsara, but you fail, because these two notions, they kept there very tightly. Right? Yes, the tightly. When you do practice of a Tara or any other deities, we, are, we have a certain the degree of what called clinging to the, to the Tara, like my Tara. They're talking about Tara, green Tara, white Tara. And the person is so particular, I am practicing white Tara, not green Tara. Like that sort of, yeah? Then when you do practice Tara, is under the reason. Not that much dedicated in everyday life. When you have more pain and suffering, then you do more Tara practice. When everything goes okay, and your practice of Tara also reduced. Like that, you're saying to Tara, I don't need now. When I need, I will call you, something like that, right? That kind of attitude we do have anyway, yeah? You know, so therefore, our practice never be achieved. So here, what we need is what we need. We need is realizing all phenomena as an illusory. That's very important. Illusory. That's true. Mandala, form of deities, color, their shape, their characteristics are all just our the mental concept. Nothing the deities are truly existed there. All sentient beings are not truly existed. Therefore, my compassion is also not truly existed. My loving kindness is also not truly existed. But until you realize it, 
until you realize it, we need it. We need to do practice Tara. We need to do practice Manjushri. We need to do Mahakala Puja. We need to do Manjushri. We need to do meditation. We need to do compassion. We need to do loving kindness. All practices are needed or compulsorily needed to be done. It's wrong advice. Someone say everything is emptiness. No need to do. Just meditate emptiness. That is the wrong advice. If you reach that level, okay, proved. You don't need to do. Until you reach that level, as an ordinary practitioner, still who has a cling or, or the grasp to the guru, to the yidam, to the protector, we still need to do. Yes, of course. It's not so simple to say that everything is empty. Everything is empty, that's no problem. But problem is to realize it, isn't it? Yes, that is the fact, that is the matter. We are not talking about everything is not empty. Who complains that? Yes, that's true. Buddha is not truly there. Deities are not truly there. Dharma protectors are not truly there. That's true. There's no problem with that. Our biggest problem is to realize such. So in order to realize such, we need to go through step by step. That's very important. Advisable. Don't jump immediately. You cannot jump. You will fall down. Yes. Therefore, in our daily life, when you hear a good sound, don't attach. Think it is illusory sound. Right? Now, this is practice. It does not mean that I realize as an illusory sound. But sound itself is a very illusory, as a true, but in order to realize it, we have to artificially, first, we have to artificially build up such a knowledge and understanding. So therefore, when someone press you, say that, oh, you are so nice, you are so beautiful, you are perfect, then if you are not careful, then the ego will arise. Yes, I'm perfect, I'm beautiful, I'm nice, I'm high, then pride arise. So at that moment, you should apply, say, oh, that sound is illusory. Somebody next to you accuse you, uh, criticize you, use uh, harsh words, bad words on you. Okay, same time you should think, oh, this is illusory sound. It doesn't matter. No, the good and the bad things are all the same. All come from Dhammakaya anyway. It is come. They are all come from Dhammakaya. It is the manifestation of the Dhammakaya. It's a reflection of the Dhammakaya. Yes, is it true? Always. If there is no Dhammakaya, you cannot find those sounds, those images, those forms, those substances, Nirvana, Samsara. Everything is come from Dhammakaya. Because of Dhammakaya, we are in the Samsara. Because of the Dhammakaya, we are in the Nirvana. Everything, every movement is come from Dhammakaya. But problem is to understand it, to realize it. Therefore, in order to realize such, we need to continue, practice continuously, and face any difficulties, difficult situation must not give up our practice. Sometimes it's difficult, isn't it? Because our expectation is too high, like myself, Sometimes I trust my deity so much. But when a problem comes to me, then I thought, oh, my deity is hopeless. Yes, that sort of comes. Yes, it's true. I cannot deny, truly. And sometimes Mahakala also. When problem come to you, then I get, I get sometimes angry at Mahakala. Then I thought, sometimes I do tell him secretly, say that, is it okay I stop you? I'm stupid. He's okay. Maybe. Luckily he's not a human being. Otherwise he will say, yes, go ahead, stop. Then see how. Are you getting better? But stupid idea come from stupid attitude. Stupid attitude come from stupid circumstance. Stupid circumstance come from confusion, stupid confusion. So the, all the stupid things are together. Right? That time we are blind completely. That attitude disturbs our energy of the spiritual. 
that disturbs our stability of the mind. Inner quality is still there, but because of such attitude, that inner attitude is being covered. Then very difficult of course, for us to be found in discovery. Therefore, here, Lani Thamba prays, may myself and all sentient beings be able to realize that everything is illusory, unattached, be delivered from the bondage of samsara. We are never in the samsara, never. We are never in the samsara. The samsara is just a concept. Our pain is a samsara. Our misery is a samsara. Unwanted situation is a samsara. There is no such thing, so-called samsara, somewhere separately. Never. If you are able to found your own innermost quality, that the ultimate joy, ultimate happiness, that is the nirvana. Nirvana, samsara, there is no such two different notions are separately existed. When you are not realized, it's called samsara. Once you realize, it is called nirvana. That's the view from the Madhyamika, no, Mahati and Mahamudra. So in order to reach to that realization and understanding, and I want you to go through all the practices step by step, like accumulation of merit and uh, purification of negativities, right? There are so many like refuge, wonder practice, generating bodhicitta in our daily life, and be sincere with your practice. Uh, be sincere is so important. Buddha's bodhisattvas always within us, always with us. They are never separate from us somewhere else. They are always within us. But if you are not sincere, then although they are within us, they cannot hear us and we cannot sense they are here. So it very much depends on your own behavior, your mental attitude. So the connection, disconnect, or connect is your attitude, depends on your attitude. It's nothing to do with, with themselves. It's nothing to do with your personality. But it is something basic, you know, the phenomena that is always there to make connection and the connection make sure always remain there. Unbroken ability. So that is your attitude. That is attitude. So I would like to request audiences these teachings are not from me. The teachings from the Gadampa, Nagatamba. I myself also received this from His Holiness, the Devu Kesari in the, uh, 1997, and uh, in Bauda, at Shechen Monastery. And uh, so, such a profound teaching, I believe there is a blessing. Blessing come from their realization. We are as a follower, so to fulfill their wish, so we try all our best. Does not mean that guarantee we will do, but at least we will not delay. Any question?